My name is Willie Jackson, and um, when I was convicted of a homicide. I've been out now a year and a little over a year and a half. incarcerated for 23 and a half years. Uh, uh, during that incarceration, as you can imagine, you go through a series of evolutions, you know, where you, you're growing, you're constantly growing, being challenged uh, uh, um, to, to be something different, something better than what you were before you went in, you know. And so the last thing that I imagined that I would be doing is yoga. You know, I thought that yoga, to be honest with you, I thought that was something for women or something. A lot of guys may sign up for some those type of programs just to escape and get away from, get out of the cell or get away from the same, everything that they're doing every day. And I was one of those guys. Well, it's an opportunity for me to get out of the cell. But once I got there and then I learned, I began to learn about it, I began to appreciate, you know, what, and, uh, about yoga and, and quickly found myself becoming, you know, a champion of it, you know. It's a program called Yoga at the River and it was called that because it took place at the Illinois uh, River, Illinois River Correctional Center in Canton, Illinois. So it's a, a medium security prison. I learned about it because the Yoga Chicago, which is a very useful journal, published a call for mats so that the men who wanted to practice yoga there would have something besides towels to practice on. This was a program that was unusual in that it was a social uh, organization that had formed um, organically within the prison itself to create a yoga community, not just individual inmates who practiced yoga and found a sense of freedom or release from within the bars, but an entire um, community that together wanted to practice principles of yoga along with the physical postures. For me, I think the most important part of it is what a lot of people would call it a technology. It's it's you could think of it as a technology of the self. Something magical happens for your body, right? And, and so yoga, I immediately learned that, you know, that, you know, it's, it's a unification of the mind, body, and spirit. And then you connect them with other people. You see what I'm saying? And then that energy, you have this collective energy with all these people. And so I get my, my quest for knowledge, you know what I'm saying, was quen you know, that thirst for it was quenched doing yoga and at the same time I was able to you know deal with the problem on my back and so I ended up being an instructor in, in, in prison as well right so I understood how to, 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 to boost the numbers to get people to participate I would come with them with power yoga Power yoga is still yoga, but, you know, to say, hey, I got power yoga going on, we got power yoga going on this month. If you think you can hang, so if you make it a challenge for in prison, oh, a challenge, what? They get to beat on their chest and say, of course I can hang. Get your abs together. Get your, you know, get your, you, you, we're going to help get your, uh, your whole body in condition if you can hang. And so quickly, the biggest guys, the most macho, the most, you know, uh, 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 Aggressive guys will sign up because they want to, you know, stand up to that challenge. But once you get them in, you find out just like me, just like a lot of people, especially of a certain age, they have injuries. They can have all kind of back problems, neck problems, joint problems, you know, and, and hey, and then they begin to ask questions. Hey, could you do this? That's wild they there, you know what I'm saying? Yoga actually became the thing to do. And being known as a yoga guy, that's the phrase they used, being known as a yoga guy, meant that they had, a, in a sense, a reputation to uphold as a peaceful person within the prison and someone to whom other people who wanted a peaceful experience in the prison could come. Let's be honest, you're dealing with people who've done, a lot of people who've done things, not done the right things in life, right? And so, if you, when you're in a situation like that, you're gonna have fights, arguments, confrontations, a lot of that, right? But the yoga program, we took a lot of pride in the fact that there was never a fight during the yoga program. There were never any assaults, never the, none of the things that was typical that would happen throughout the prison, they, they didn't happen. The men who were new students within the yoga program would come up to any of the six or so men who were the sort of reigning community of teachers that I, that I got to work with 
um, and ask them about their medical problems. They would ask them for advice of uh, poses they could do to alleviate certain issues. Um, and, and I think there was the, this, the idea that these were people who had gotten their act together um, and could be models for other people. And so when I, you know, when I would ask the guys what would be their greatest hope for the yoga program going forward, because you know, their hope individually was that eventually they would be released and go home to their families and, and new lives, their hope was that everyone in the prison would be practicing yoga. They wanted everybody to have it. And they also hoped that by modeling qualities that they were very ready to name, humility, uh, a spirit of service, respectfulness, modesty, peacefulness, a dampening down of their individual egos for need for attention, if they could do that, they could help the conditions in the prison as a whole. So typically I'll get up in the morning before workout, I'll come here. Make sure uh, I get up, and when I when, when I when I wake up, like I said, a lot of yoga is about awareness. So as I'm moving around, getting myself together, I try to see how my body feels. I'll go through a series of uh, slow motion uh, routines, you know. So that uh, sun salutation is a great exercise for that, just to get my mind in tune with my body, and then all of that together sets the tone for my day. Because once my mind and my body right, then I can begin my day and dealing with people and whatever challenges that come with, with that day a lot better. So I was always wondering what would happen at the end of a prison yoga class. And what I saw Willie do, to my great surprise, was he asked the men to sit in a cross-legged position on their mats, close their eyes, and just listen to him. So they feel protected, they feel safe, they're not going to be jumped by somebody. And he's giving them something fun to listen to. So he's giving them this, in a sense, hilarious, but, but sort of lovingly written yoga rap. Um, and they're listening to it with great seriousness. And it seems to me, at least from the outside, that they're focusing. Namaste. Inhale, exhale. Namaste. Breathe. Inhale. Breathe. Exhale. You know, I, I intend to practice it when I can, whenever I need it, and share it with other people. So that's a lifelong thing, you know. I'll be passing that on hopefully from generation to generation. My family will be a family where people will know that's what they do. The Jacksons, all they do is they do yoga. Down with facing dog and move into a cobra. Doing up with facing dog and back to bend and over. Step into a launch. The runner pose is calm. You move into a warrior's one. The burn has just begun. Unify the mind and body till they're both are one. It doesn't matter if you're old or young. Yoga is for everyone. Let's go. Namaste. Namaste. Inhale. Exhale. Namaste. Breathe. 